might pay some building. Well, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon and welcome back to Casey Stadium for the conclusion of the Indoor Cricket National Championships. It's the men's grand final, the Australian Capital Territory against Queensland. I'd like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the lands on which we meet today and I acknowledge their elders past and present. I'd also like to acknowledge our broadcast partners, Sportscast Australia, doing a fantastic job conveying these images right around Australia and the world. And of course, the wonderful centre here, the Casey Stadium. The team here have done a wonderful job throughout the week. And uh, they've got a great facility for this tournament. But we have before us now the men's grand final. Please join me in congratulating the umpire appointed to stand in that match, Andrew Hall Villiers. And introducing first, Queensland. And their opponent, the Australian Capital Territory. Ladies and gentlemen, it's great to be back. It's great to have indoor cricket back and we've got a blockbuster conclusion to this tournament coming up. But first, please be upstanding. It is time for the Australian National Anthem. Well, here we are, ladies and gentlemen. It's time for the big dance, the men's final between Queensland and the Australian Capital Territory here at the 2022 Indoor Cricket National Championships. If you're just joining us, I'm Cameron Walter alongside Stephen Mogg. And it all comes down to this, Moggy. What a final we are about to see. Queensland undefeated throughout the week. They've accounted for the ACT on three occasions now. Two of those by a single run. Look, these two teams are fantastic. They've played numerous times in big games over the last few years, and it's nothing. It doesn't uh, change anything here for both these teams. It's going to be a close game, which is what we're looking for. A close game, an exciting game, two giants of indoor cricket. It's been three years since we've been here. Queensland, of course, the defending champions, uh, having defeated Victoria on their home ground back in 2019. But Victoria not featuring today. It's the ACT. They're back. Queensland, uh, we're just trying to confirm the final side for you. But there are some, some obvious outs, Moggy. Yeah, there are a number of outs with Queensland. There's three of them out injured. Um, so Lyle Teske, the captain of the team, which is a big out, injured himself last night. Also, uh, Bremen Course out. Jamie Stewart out as well. I can confirm that... Nick Waters comes into the team for a place Lyle Tesky to be the same team otherwise last night. 
So it means Robert Fitzgerald will get to captain his state in a Nationals Grand Final, which is excellent for him. Yeah, look, Rob Fitzgerald feels like he's been around forever. Um, one of the absolute legends of the game, and there aren't many honours that he doesn't already have to his name, uh, but captaining his state in a national final is one that we get to add to it. Uh, we can confirm the uh, ACT lineup, so uh, Moggy, why don't you take us through that side? Captain for ACT, Matt Flores, Vinash Bennett, Luke Bryan, Timmy Flores, Alex Pizana, Alexander Flores, Tyler Hayes, Tyler Van Leeuwen, unchanged from last evening. So the Queensland team, without the piece of paper, I'll rattle them off. Uh, we have uh, Robert Fitzgerald, Jeremy Crichton, Bo Zorko, Nick Waters. Uh, Josh Drever. Josh Drever, yeah, he's coming out first to bat. Uh, Adam McDermott, uh, Reese Dearness. Is that enough? Oh, no, forgot one, Jaden Teske. So although we're missing Lyle Teske, we have his son Jaden Teske out there today. So two excellent sides here ahead of what will be an unbelievable final, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for joining us right around Australia and the world. We come to you live from Casey Stadium, and it is time for the big dance. Queensland undefeated throughout the week. They've had some injuries, but Moggy, how much depth have they got, mate? Yeah, look, Queensland's pretty proud. You know, you bring 12 guys to a tournament like this for this reason. You, you back the 12 that you have to be able to get the job done, and all of them have played pretty well throughout the week, so it would have been a tough decision for Brenton to, to narrow it down to the line, but here we go, we're getting underway. The umpire for the match is Andrew Hall Villiers. At the crease, Rob Fitzgerald and Josh Drever, and the ball is in the hands of Luke Ryan. Ladies and gentlemen, buckle up. Short and wide and put away for two. Good start there by Robert Fitzgerald. Nothing wrong with that ball too. What we're going to see here is some high quality cricket and I, I think both of these teams match up particularly well. Just Drever on strike now. Put it flat. Through, a flick. Another two runs. A little bit of hesitation by Fitzy there. He should have just held back just to make sure it went past the field. Although it was flat, it was a good call and there was two runs there. Fitzgerald back on strike. Good shot, good call. This is a good start for the Queensland guys. It just helps settle the nerves a little bit. Um, you know, a lot of these guys have played these national finals all the time, but it has been a few years. It's been three years since they've been here. So I'm sure it'll just help settle them down. It's a great delivery there from Luke Ryan. An absolute weapon in the ACT's arsenal. Yeah, he's a, definitely a strike bowler. Um, I felt probably bowled a little short last night. He seems to have adjusted his length here and is causing a little bit of trouble. And the Queensland boys are up to the task at this stage. And strays down leg side with one to come in the over. Queensland, of course, won those two games against the ACT by a single run, including uh, in the major semi-final where they scored, was it 39 in the last partnership to win the game. So clearly capable of absorbing a lot of pressure and still performing are the Queensland side. <laughs> put away again for two. And nine runs from the first over. A great start for Queensland. There yeah, certainly is. That was a very confident shot by the uh, driver there. And look, two games by one run indicates how close both of these teams really are with each other. Um, you know, I know we've watched and commentated a number of games through finals over the last couple of years, and they've just been neck and neck. Um, Huge crowd building here at Casey Stadium. Lots of people interested in the outcome of this match. And thank you for your company around the world. We really do appreciate you tuning in. As indoor cricket, it's back, baby. It's back. Couldn't be happier as well. Tyler Van Lorn now to come in the bowl to Josh Drever. That's a pretty good shot. Can't do much about that. That's a very good shot. Probably just a little full. Uh, right line. The line was really good, but a little bit full and a great shot by Drever for three runs off his legs. As you say, Cam, there is a big crowd for me here. I'm sure they'll get right behind both teams. 
chance. Safe in the end. He's too quick between the wickets. They certainly are. They're both making very good contact with the ball too and batting with some confidence, which is excellent to see. Great rock. I think that one's just kept a little low. He's played yeah, over the top did. of that. And look, that's just a slight variation in the bounce there. That was a really, really good ball. And Lewin continues. In position for Driva. It's two to the tally. Yeah, you're exactly right there, Cam. He's just got himself in a nice position. Soft hands, beautiful shot for two. Queensland just ticking the scoreboard over here. Just noodles that one around the corner. It was a good run for one, but Matt Flores on the leg side, he is an absolute weapon. Uh, and we saw some uncertainty with the Vicks any time they hit it near them. I'm sure Queensland will be very concerned too. Chance straight to Bazana on the three line. Queensland don't move and a dot ball to finish, but still seven runs from the over. Yeah, that was a good over again for Queensland. Uh, even that last shot, like he's made good contact with it, probably hit it a little bit fat, but flat, but it was a really, really good call. So Alex Bazana now coming on to bowl. Very tall lad. Generate a little bit of bounce here. The Queensland will be very happy with this start so far. There's plenty of hard work still to come with 14 overs, but it's been a positive start. And these two are very experienced players, both uh, in previous Australian representatives. So it's a strong partnership for Queensland. Nice shot for one by Robert Fitzgerald. Now, interestingly, uh, the ACT lost the toss. Queensland elected to bat. All three encounters so far this tournament, Queensland have chased. Right. It's the first time they've batted first. Chance in the front court. Too good from Matt Floros. Here's a weapon of mass destruction in that leg side position. Followed the ball, got it back to the keeper. And the ACT claims their first wicket. Yeah, that's uh, a great delivery. Let's watch this on the replay. It's a little bit flat right in the corner. Josh Reaver wanted to go. Robert Fitzgerald rightly sent him back. Lovely touch by Matt Flores. ACT with their first wicket. Full and driven. Chance at the top. The throw. Needed a direct hit. He's just hitting the ball a little bit flat at the moment. Um, he's played some really good shots so far, but... Uh, look, it's a big occasion for both teams. Chance to be crowned national champion. Shorter of a length. Down up there by Robert Fitzgerald. Nice and easy single. This has been a, a fairly good over by Alex Bazana so far. Got the first wicket for the ACT guys with a lovely touch in the front court by Matt Flores. Smart callie from Queensland. Good areas from Bazana. Yeah, no, he's been a good over so far. He'd like to finish this set off here with a particularly good ball for the last ball. That is a great shot. It's two just inside that three line. They get back positive for the over. One run from it. 17 is on the board so far. Three overs down. The first wicket falls and it showed. It shows the ACT are a sharp building side if you give them an opportunity. Yeah, they certainly are. They're a well drilled and well balanced team. They, uh, they bat well, and they bowl well, and their fielding is particularly sharp as well, especially Matt Flores on that leg side. It's almost like if you hit it to him, you don't run. And, and not only is he good low, he's also good high as well. He's a very tall guy. He reads the play well. He's got a rocket arm to the top end, and he gets good touches down the front. 
Alex Flores will bowl the last over to the pair. 17 is on the board. There's a chance at the top, the flick. Direct hit would have been interesting, but Drew is pretty quick between those wickets. He is, he is really sharp. But it's still good. It was a nice shot and nice contact. Uh, and there was, there was definitely a run there, so it was a good call by both. Uh, Robert Fitzgerald on strike. Two man leg side field, both quite straight. They are. Straight fielders on the three line. And a great shot from Fitzgerald. Doesn't matter. Robert Fitzgerald just pierces the gap there. You could have three there and he still would have found a gap, I think. He's all class. He is. Just all class. And his nickname is the robot. She just keeps on going and going. Consistent. If the legs, a chance. Floris holds onto the ball, seeing that Fitzgerald had returned to his crease. Well, they are very aware of the presence of Matt Forrest on the leg side. And, um, you know, and, and they obviously erred once, and uh, Matt Forrest capitalised with a, a good touch for a run out. That's another good over so far for ACT. There's a chance at the top. He's got a hit. Again, Drever is quick. Yeah, the advantage there is it went up and hit the top net, which just took a little bit of pace off it, which allowed him to get through. Van Lauren moved well, got close to the ball. Uh, but yeah, a direct hit would have made it interesting, but I think Drever still would have made it through. Two to come in the partnership. A chance for Matt Floros to slap and a direct hit. He does it again. You can't stop him. You cannot keep him out of the game. You said it before, it's almost a no when you hit it to him, and that is why another big wicket on the second last ball of the pair. Check this out on the replay. Follows it. Judged it perfectly, and a direct hit slap, if you don't mind. Yeah, that's beautiful fielding. He's really aggressive on the ball, and attacks the ball, and gets a beautiful touch. That is what plenty of practice and years of experience brings you. Final ball of the partnership. It's a great shot, and kept off the net by Bennett. So it is a singular finish in 17 runs for the pair. You'd probably call that even Stevens. Stephen. Yes, I would. Thank you, Cameron. <laughs> uh, yeah, look, no, I think uh, I think both teams will be reasonably okay with that. Um, look, Queensland started really, really well, really solid. And it was just a couple of bits of magic by Matt Flores in the front court uh, to get those couple of wickets. So this is a pair, a couple of newer guys from the Queensland team. Um, this will be their first national finals at an Opens level. So I am sure they are undoubtedly very, very nervous here. Um, both very good players and, and you know to make the top 12 for Queensland you have to be a good player so those players are Bo Zorko and Nick Waters Tyler Hayes is going to bowl the fifth over it is the men's final coming to you live from Casey Stadium here in Victoria thanks for your company I'm Cameron Walter with Stephen Mogg a fresh pair fresh to national finals interesting cricket about to unfold oh, it is. this is a big pair for Queensland here's Tyler Hayes a chance here, it was flat, but not gathered cleanly, and it was through that gap. Bazana probably not not fully into that front court from that three-line position, maybe waited a bit too long. It's a long way for him to reach down, too. Yeah, it is. Up from the clouds. Nick Waters on strike. Straight to Bazana. I think there'll be plenty of action for him here on that three-line. Oh, I think so, yeah. Look, that was a... Um no, that wasn't a bad shot. A little bit of a nervy shot, but it still wasn't a bad shot. But it was a really good call, and that's what's important. Shot. Great shot from Waters, and if this is his first, first final, he's come into the side for the injured Queensland captain, as you say, and that shot will do his confidence the world of good. Oh, it certainly will. That's, as a batter, uh, irrespective of how many years' experience, that's what you want. You want to feel a nice shot off the bat and hit it into the springs. Shot to, that was a wider ball, really had to reach for it, but he's played it late and that's allowed him to get it over the top of it and down up too. Tyler generates a fair bit of pace, Tyler Hayes, he's pretty sharp. There's an opportunity there, only one man on the offside. A little bit of hesitation from Nick Waters, you know he didn't hit it really clear but it was a really good call by Bo Zorko. So Zorko's a big name in AFL, mate. His brother uh, 
close to the Brisbane Lions. Good there finish. You go. Yeah, good finish to the over by Tyler Hay. Seven runs to Queensland. Um, I think that's a fairly even, really. There were some nice shots there. That'll really help settle the nerves, the two, uh, I'll call them rookies, rookies for this uh, for this kind of game, the Open Men's Grand Final at Nationals. Well, they'll have to contend now with Tim Floros. He'll bowl the second over to the partnership. And, uh, what sort of a score do you think Queensland want or need? Oh, I don't know if I want to say it. I said the 22s needed 100 and they got half of that. So uh, Queensland would like 200. They'd really like that. That's very unrealistic. Just, oh, confusion. Direct hit. The appeal, but it's like Waters was back. Yeah, I think it was fairly safe. Um, it was a big convincing appeal by the ACT guys, but sort of look on the replay Don't here. Don't mind a bit of theatrics. Yeah, it was yeah, safe. Well and truly it is so. third ball, though. The score has to change on this delivery. Third ball. Shot. And a great shot to see it off. <laughs> Two shot. runs. That's beautiful. Now, look, getting back to the score, I think we, we talk about it a lot. I think 80 is a very, very competitive score out here. Both teams, again, match up very well. I'm sure you'll come back to us and let us know a few of the scores that they've scored throughout the week as Flores comes in the bowl. Well, the, the two close games, 98 to 99, right. 81 to 80. So it's, it really is in that zone, isn't it? It's that 80 to 100 runs. Anything in there is an incredibly competitive score. It's a good call. See, again, Matt Forrest is particularly good there, but that was really soft hands by Bo Zorko uh, and allowed it not, not going too hard at it, and it came softly off the back net to give him the extra time to get through. Yeah, look, I, I think anywhere between that 80 and 100, uh, both well, Queensland will be happy with. It's a good call. Good early call of no. You see lots of traffic there for the ACT. Tyler Van Leeuwen right into that front court, so negated the fact that it had got through to the net. Yeah. Uh, yeah, look, I think if ACT can keep Queensland to 80, they'll be happy. And if Queensland can get to 100, they'll be happy. So, shot. Chance at the top. A couple balls. There's always a chance if it comes down. But again, these guys are quick between the wickets. Yeah. Brings the over to an end. Five runs from it. Still fairly evenly poised at the moment. Yeah. Both teams are just feeling each other out at the moment. But yeah, it's definitely a very, very even contest. We get the... Uh, the veteran Vanesh Bennett coming on to bowl. He's been excellent uh, all week as well. Vanesh, over his time, over his long career, you know, the, his in, the way in which he uses his intensity has changed. He's very, he's still an intense character, but he's very relaxed. Doesn't mind chatting, has a bit of a, a smile and a laugh. And it's really, I think, is one of the reasons he's able to keep competing at this level yeah. so well. Just enjoying his cricket. That's it, exactly right. Starts with a wide. It's a good result for Queensland. You know, these two guys would have heard plenty about Vanesh Bennett over the years and perhaps haven't had the opportunity to face him before. So, um, yeah, reputation might have proceeded. Straight to the three line. Van Leeuwen tried his up. And he just didn't get that one flush. It's almost like it's a little bit of the outside edge of the bat, maybe the slight leading edge. But again, it was a good call, and that's that's what's been impressive with this partnership as well. Uh, the first partnership, there was a few calls that were pretty tight. Driven straight back to the receiver. Zorko smartly stayed in his crease. It is third ball. So, again, two consecutive dots in the same partnership. The score must change on the following ball, whether it's through a run, an extra, or a wicket. It's always an, an opportunity for the field inside. It's through and hits the net. Two runs. And they see it off. I think it took a little deflection off Matt Flores' leg there. Uh, and that just made uh, Tyler Van Leeuwen have to change tack a little bit. He still moved well to get to the ball. Well, it's a good result for Queensland off the third ball. There's two balls remaining in the over. Queensland moving the score to 16. Fair delivery. Just inside the legs there for Zorko. 
inside the line, I should say. I don't know how you get inside the legs. But one to come. Queensland building the score nicely at the moment. Another great delivery from Vinesh Bennett to finish. They'll be on third ball again. Quality over. Had the leg side to start with, but then four dot balls yeah, that was out a, of the remaining five. Yeah, no, that was an excellent over from Vinesh. Just used all of his experience. Um, you know, he's probably not quite as quick as he once was in his younger years, although <laughs> he was never really expressed. But, um, yeah, no, that was, he'd be very happy with that over. Like, disappointed about the first ball, but he's come back and responded really well. Importantly for Queensland, although I guess, I guess a low scoring over, they didn't lose a wicket. Yeah. So they've seen that over off. And now on third ball, though, yeah. it'll be Alex Floros to bowl his second over and the last over to this partnership. Just made a slight change in the field, moving that second guy on the leg side a little bit deeper and a little bit straighter. It's a bit of tall timber there on the leg side. Just. Sit straight to the offside. So, actually, this ACT team does have a few taller guys. I don't think, uh, I think the biggest team I've seen is that New South Wales under 22s. It's just full of big units. They are, yeah. yeah. They don't miss gym days, those guys. <laughs> Speaking of, uh, of units, anyone with a haircut or a hairstyle like Alex Flores has right now is a unit. Uh, Check it out. Have a look. There's a few interesting hairstyles around at the moment, mate. There really is. Soak it up, folks. Four to come. Shot. Great shot. Just hit with authority. It's made good contact. Played through the line of the ball and bangs that one up. He's probably a little bit on the full side, which allowed him to sort of get over the top of it. And again, Nick Waters is a fairly tall guy as well. And there's the famous ACT clap. Driven straight, it hits the stumps, goes through to the net, and no run taken. Yeah, well, that could have gone anywhere, really. Um, lucky for ACT, it went straight, and the Nationals all over it. Uh, I know the Queensland boys were looking to take a run, but they made the right decision to stay. I think the fielding from Vinesh. It, okay, it hit the stumps, so deflected. He followed it back and then went back to the stumps with his body. He didn't try and flick it back, he just went back there. Smart cricket. Good shot again. One to come now. It's been a good, good start here for this uh, pair for Queensland. They'd like to finish here nice and solid. Happy with a dot and well batted from two men playing in their first national final. 23 runs moves the score to 40 and that's about halfway to the, that competitive range we think they'll need to score. As we see Adam McDermott and Jeremy Crichton take the court for Queensland. It's, uh, I've said it before, I'll say it again, it's evenly poised. If Certainly. you're just joining us folks, I'm Cameron Walter with Stephen Mogg and it's the men's final here at Indoor Cricket's National Championships. Thanks for your company. If you like what you see, you can get involved in Indoor Cricket. At play.cricket.com.au, you can find your local centre. And if not a centre, then maybe a club for the upcoming summer of cricket. How do you see it at the moment, Moggy? 40 on the board. Very evenly poised at this mm. stage. Um, I, think, uh, I think Queensland will be reasonably happy with that. Uh, I was very impressed with the, the second pair there. A couple of newer guys into the team playing their first national final. And to hit 23 on the big stage is very, very impressive. Um, but, yeah, look, I, I don't think ACT will be too disappointed either. But I think they bowled pretty well. They created a couple of chances as well. And, and I feel that they're right in the game at the moment. Adam McDermott will face the first ball. Luke Ryan rolling his second over. The chance... Not fielded cleanly there in the front court. Yeah, Adam McDermott's batting with Jeremy Crichton. Uh, wasn't the greatest shot that Adam McDermott's hit, but it was a really good early and solid call by Jeremy Crichton. Oh. 
plane a miss. Didn't quite get out there. No. Crichton. Look, it was fairly wide. Um, I mean, Jeremy's a, a fairly tall guy, so he's got a decent amount of reach. Um, it did, did flirt with that wide line out there, but uh, very good ball from Ryan. The ball's pretty sharp. Ryan's the edge. A chance for Flores at the top. Needed a direct hit, but Crichton, like many of these Queenslanders, quick between the wickets. Yeah, look, I don't think he ran as well as he could have. He was sort of looking to see where the ball went. Uh, if you know it's going anywhere near Matt Flores and you've decided to run, you just go. Don't look, just go. It, seemed, it looks like they're bowling wide to Crichton. Nice shot. Well Good. kept off the net from Luke Ryan. Great fielding off his own bowling. Yeah, that was excellent. That's that's the level of commitment you'd like to see at this level. Um, you know, like that could have he could have easily let that go for three. But knowing how close these games are between these two teams, every single run will be vital. See if they bowl wide again to Crichton. They do. Oh. He's up to the challenge this time. Helps himself to two. I think that's definitely a ploy by the looks of it. Uh, look, it was pretty successful the first couple, but Jeremy Crichton's made the adjustment now. Final ball for Luke Ryan in the match. On the tournament, in fact. Straight to Flores in the front court. Tim Flores, I suppose I should specify. And uh, a dot ball to finish with a good call. Six runs from the over. What's, uh, Something's building, Moggy. It is. Something's building. It's either going to be a, uh, a cool, calm and collected accumulation of runs here from Queensland or somebody's going to spark something for the ACT. Oh, yeah. Matt Flores hasn't bowled yet, I've noticed. He'll bowl the 12th and the 16th, I would yeah. hazard. So Tyler Van Leeuwen now to come and bowl. You're right. It's just got that little feel about something's going to happen, doesn't it? Two on the legs of the left-hander. Hit on the offside. For two. Look, that's a little strange. Like uh, we, we talked about uh, maybe the plan to Jeremy is to bowl wide outside off stump. And they've put two on the left side. It could have been the double bluff too. Side. Strays behind that line. And the extras on the board. Queensland moving to 10. And the score of 50 at this stage. Chance at the top. Ball hung in the net long enough. Yeah, it did. Look, it didn't get as high as I think McDermott would have liked. But he uh, pierced the gap particularly well. That was a good call and ran through. And there's two on the offside for Crichton. Let's see if continue with the wide line outside off stump. That was a good shot by Crichton. I think he's worked out the plan to him as well. He had a little shuffle then across to the off stump to give himself that, not having to reach as far and get the ball under his eyes a bit more. So I think this is the level of cricket, you know. He's probably read that ACT have a plan and he's made a slight adjustment. Ooh, that's a great ball by Van Leeuwen. Yeah, top rock. Particularly McDermott's got such a, a leg side stance. He's almost more or less on that leg side line. Sometimes it made a little leg cutter there. It's just done a little bit off the surface. Final ball for Van Leeuwen. Kept off the single to finish. For Queensland, they moved to 15 for the pair. Yeah, no, that's another excellent over. And look, both teams, they, again, they're just feeling each other out. There's no team that's really showing any ascendancy here, you know. We, it is one of my favourite things to talk about, about uh, momentum shifts and all those sort of things. But both teams are just working very, very hard at the moment. They are two very quality opposition. Um, they, they match up, like I've said previously, they match up pretty well. We've got Alex Bazana coming in the bowl. You can see the crowd there uh, it's a massive here crowd. at Casey Stadium. Lots of people assembled and enjoying this high-quality indoor cricket. Rosanna holds his second.
Interesting there, McDermott's first call was for no, because he wasn't sure he hit it well, but Jeremy Crichton's called him through. There was definitely two runs there, so that was some good batting by the non-striker. Just squared McDermott up a little bit. So moving to the offside again. Let's, I'm pretty sure the plan is wide to Crichton. Left side wide. Either the double bluff again, or I don't have the plan right. One of the two. It just helps Queensland just amass a bit more of a score. It's just ticking away nicely at the moment. Bazana comes in the bowl. Full ball. Just trying to think of the history between these two sides in grand finals. I think the mm. first time they met, the ACT won. The second time, Queensland won. And... The third time the ACT won. I think this is the first time they've met since that in a final. But my memory is pretty rusty due to COVID. It's been three years. Yeah. So last time, what do we have? Queensland Vic here. Yeah. And the year before that was Stand ACT by. Victoria. Yeah. Um, and the year before that was ACT Queensland. Yeah. Before that, ACT Queensland. I think it was them three years in a row, two yeah. to the ACT, one to Queensland. Yeah. Queensland. Two balls remain for Bazana. I'd like to square the ledger up in finals today. Yeah. A little bit of traffic there. There's nothing untoward by that. The uh, fielder was uh, going for the ball. It was very gentlemanly like. So last ball of the Bazana over. It's driven. Pressing. It's off the bat. And uh, it'll just be a single, but that uh, could have gone through the gap there. Could have, yeah. Well, it could have gone anywhere, really. It could have gone straight to the receiver. Yeah. Um, yep. But, yeah, Jeremy has got his bat in the way of that one. Uh, probably robbed McDermott of a couple of extra runs. But 22 for the skin. Yeah, Total seven off 62. that over. Yeah, they're looking good. Very consistent here at the moment, the Queensland guys. And it is going to be the captain, Matt Floros. Getting some words of uh, inspiration from Billy, the coach. Yeah, um, Matt's uncle, long-time coach of the Rockets, former Australian vice-captain. At one point, probably played uh, more games at Nationals than anybody. Maybe Robert Fitzgerald's taken that mantle uh, I now. Think, I think he, he likely has, yes. The final over of the pair. Nice shot. Great start from Adam McDermott. Three runs, that's beautiful. Just a little bit wide, McDermott's waited nicely. Again, soft hands, didn't really try and overhit it, he's just made good contact with the ball. Three runs, beautiful. That Forrest comes in the bowl. Cool. Straight to Tim Forrest there on the legs of the left-handed Crichton. Early call of no. No, it was a good call as well. I mean, that was a beautiful ball by Matt Flores. Uh, Jeremy Crotton didn't quite get all of it. Still made reasonable contact. Driven, misfielded. Yep. Into the three nets. I believe it's three, yeah. Valuable runs here for Queensland. This partnership looking fantastic now. Look, likely to go north of 30. And the total north of 70. Brings the three figures into play, Moggy. Don't give them the commentator's curse. I haven't done it yet today, mate. It's all good. Yeah, it's me usually. Yep. It's good comeback from yeah. Matt Flores. Great ball by Matt Flores. He's bowling well. He's asking plenty of questions here. Queensland are up to the task at the moment. Two balls remaining. It's the paddle. Lovely paddle by Adam and Jonah. It's only for a single, but it's a safe shot. Final ball of the partnership now. Good call, yeah. solid finish. Yeah. Another good over for Queensland. Seven runs from it, a partnership of 29, and the total moves to 69 here in the men's final at the Indoor Cricket National Championships. 
Shaping up to be a great one, everybody. I hope you are enjoying the coverage as we come to you live from Casey Stadium here in Victoria. Lots of stuff coming up with indoor cricket. Uh, for, the, for the next week, it's the Junior National Championship Carnival. So this time next week, we'll have their final series. But a huge summer coming up. We've got the Commonwealth Games, which will feature the Australian women's cricket team. We've got the Indoor Cricket World Cup. We've got the T20 World Cup. We've got a big bash featuring the International Players Draft. A huge summer of cricket coming up. And uh, we're back. That's all I can say. Yeah, no, it's fantastic. There is so much quality cricket back on at the moment. A um, couple of good test series as well. Uh, yeah, looking forward to you know, watching plenty of cricket. Reese Dearness and Jaden Teske at the crease now for Queensland. The ball is with Tyler Hayes. The game remains evenly poised. Driven. Soft. A little bit of a half chance there from Vanasha. It was a very difficult one. It sort of got to him on the half volley. Remember this pair in the major semi final 39. I wouldn't expect 39 again. They had to hit 39 to chase. I think they'll be a little bit more cautious about their approach. Interesting to see the plan they have with Jaden. Ball safe. Single. Both batters have made good contact with the ball. I mean, they're only hitting singles, but the, it's one way to keep just rotating the strike, ticking the scoreboard over. It's kept off the net by Tim Foros. What a, what a moment for Jaden Teske. He uh, has the honour of playing in this national carnival with his dad, Lyle Teske. You and I were struggling to think of whether or not there'd been an, another example of father-son combination no, in a national side. Did we check with Shepley? No, I didn't. It's a good call. He's played that one down and up into the top net, which has dropped and ran over the top of it. Some instructions from coach Billy Floros. So this is a couple of young fellas, Tyler Hayes, Bowen, with Jake Teske, Jaden Teske. I'm sure they would have played against each other in the junior somewhere. Shorter ball, legal ball. Maybe that was the instruction. I'd, I'd with say it was, yeah. It's well executed too. That just snuck in under head height. <laughs> well, keeper almost wore that one as well. Yeah. One to come for Tyler Hayes. And again. Mm. Teske ready for it this time. Gets a single, four runs from the over. Yeah, I think that was the little instruction there from Billy Flores to uh, just shorten him up a little bit. Um, but look, that was a great over by Tyler Hayes. Uh, only went for the four runs, uh, four singles. Uh, but Queensland still looking very solid. They're just not giving many wickets away. Uh, I think I'm correct in saying it was the, the first skin. They lost an over, a wicket in the fourth over, and since then have not lost a wicket. So really conserving their wicket in batting with plenty of discipline. Yeah, Timmy Flores now coming in the bowl. Oh, it's a great rock, but they'll get away with a run. Yeah, Reese pulled him well through there. Just come off the leg, but yeah, there was definitely a run there and a good call. Helps rotate the strike. They're doing it in ones at the moment, but ones will continue to build the score. Oh. Beaten. Oh. That's an absolute peach of a delivery. Let's watch that one on the replay if we get the chance. And yeah, miss stumping. That's a cracking one. Beating ball. everybody that. Again, soft hands and just squeezed a little bit square of Matt Forrest. Queensland are definitely conscious of his presence on the leg side. He's responsible for the two wickets so far with lovely bits of fielding. Oh, a chance for the keeper. Oh, he's in decision. Just had to pick one and go. Well, he did. Reese has called no and stopped and then realised that Jaden Teske, and just watch the replay, has overcommitted. So he's called the no, but he knows he's the best chance to get there. So excellent team play by Reese Dennis. A 
driven Redot. One to come in the 14th over. It's been another excellent over by the ACT men. Miss hit, it'll be a dot. Quality over from Tim Floros. It's really interesting, the ACT haven't had a wicket for a while. They took those wickets in that second pair, but are still bowling very well. And what really, that's that's what is helping to restrict the scoring. Not, not that Queensland aren't on a very good total already, but it's the difference between them being around about 80 and around about 100 at this point that's right, yeah, for an innings where there's only been a couple of wickets. They are bowling particularly well. But in saying that, Queensland are making the right choices as well. Yes, yeah. Um, they're calling particularly well. I won't say they're being overly conservative. They're just being sensible at their approach. And It'll be third ball now on the back of the pressure from that previous over. Ganesh Bennett has the task. He'll be bowling to Jaden Teske. So third ball. Score must change. Oh, well wide. Couldn't execute on that occasion. Vinesh, you can see what he was trying to do. Well, he bowled a wide on the, his first over for his first ball, uh, but it, then he continued to bowl four dots for the rest of the over. So let's see if uh, Vinesh Bennett can adjust. Chance to flick. Needed to hit. Direct hit, I think, would have been very close there. So just a couple of little feeling changes they're trying to, to make here. Uh, but Billy Flores is instructing on what he'd like to see. So Reese Dearness on strike, Queensland on 11 for the skin. Shot. Again, Matt Forrest has a great presence in the front court, but that was just a really nice shot and pierced the gap and made, uh, made good contact with the ball and moved through. Well, Queensland are earning every single run here. They really are. ACT are not making it easy. That's the quality that the ACT deliver with the ball and in the field. Shot. It's a really good shot there by Jaden Teske. Ball coming in nice and close to his legs, but he's made really good contact. Got up over the top of that. Beautiful shot. Two balls remain for Vanesh Bennett in the tournament. I mean, there was nothing wrong with the ball from Vanesh. It was a really good ball. It was just a really good cricket shot as well. Driven into the backcourt for five. That's Big shot from Dennis. One of the more aggressive shots that the Queenslanders have played. Like that was a little bit on the full side. And Dearness is always going to capitalise on something like that. That's a big result. One ball remaining by Bennett. Called through. Got a hit. He does. And it's out. Great piece from Vanesh Bennett to finish the over. Undoing the back net shot. And they needed that, the ACT. Queensland were just starting to get on a roll. It had to be a direct hit. It was a tight one, Moggy. I can see you looking at the replay in earnest. I'm keen, keen to have a look. That's out. That's out, yeah. Great call by the umpire. You're right, undid the hard work of that nice shot. Um, could have said no there, perhaps. Uh, Queensland would have been on sort of 89, pushing towards that 100. Now on 84, 15 for the skin. Oh, it's just a, a crucial six balls coming up here. Matt really Forrest cops from tap from these two in that major semi and still standing up. He's going to bowl this over. Critical six balls. Chance. Good call of no. Yeah, just uh, sort of hit it and hit it back up to his body and, and create a bit of uncertainty. But look, Queensland, I think what's important here is just to try and build the score some more, you know. If they can get six off the over, a score of 90 in that mid-range we're talking about between that 80 and 100. Nice shot. Oh, so it's taking the tap, shot. yeah. Three runs to Jaden Teske. Beautiful shot. For someone playing his first national tournament at the Opens level, he's shown a great deal of maturity and he's been playing really well. It's a 
typical race tennis shot. Something Dennis is just a master master at is just getting into a position to play that shot from anywhere. Yeah. He just moves his entire body. It's not just his feet, his whole body into that position and it's a wire. Another good shot by Jaden Teske. Moving the score. Into the 90s. Yes, excellent. Two balls remain. Oh, sort of a loose throw there. Luckily, Queensland don't run for, a, for the ACT. Last ball, Queensland on 91. And a wonderful two to finish for Dennis. And Queensland batting first have posted 93 in the men's final here at the Indoor Cricket National Championships. Ladies and gentlemen, a wonderful game unfolding before us. It's some of the best indoor cricket you will see. Hope you are enjoying the coverage. Thank you for joining us. And uh, coming up, the ACT's run chase. They need 94 to win. This total's right in the zone, Moggy, of what we think is competitive. I think Queensland will be feeling pretty happy with that. Yeah, I think they really will. Uh, and I think they would have been happy with anything 80 plus and just to get a few extra runs. What really impressed me with their batting innings is the value they put on the wicket. There was only three three dismissals. Yeah. Um, two of them, Matt Flores in the front court and some magic. And they're all run outs, actually. So they're not they giving wickets away. You don't, oh, you don't like getting run out, but at least the fielding team has to earn that wicket. And sometimes you need to put a little bit of pressure on the field. But look, that's an excellent result for Queensland. I think they'll be very happy with that. In saying that, ACT bowled really, really well, fielded really well. I think they still think they're in the game. Uh, without doubt, they still think they're in the game. This is certainly a total they're capable of, of chasing. Uh, if you remember, that, that first game was 98 to 99. So both teams capable of scoring that, in that 90 region. I think the difference here that's crucial is the fact that the ACT are chasing. And they have not chased before. So uh, that puts a completely different complexion on the game. It certainly does, yeah. And as we know... Scoreboard pressure can be a major thing. It really can. You know, you try not to, but you're always just looking up there to see what's going on, especially if you lose a wicket or two. That's when you'll start to feel the pressure. There is a fairly big ACT contingent in the crowd. I'm pretty sure they'll get vocal to help try and bring the team home as well. Yep, a fairly big travelling contingent, as you say. And uh, Alex Bazana and Tyler Van Leeuwen will be opening the batting for the ACT and we thank Stephen Mogg for your commentary. He'll just, he'll take a uh, substitution out of the commentary box. So again, it's Tyler Van Leeuwen and Alex Bazana who will open the batting for the ACT and I'm joined once again on commentary by Jude Coleman, former Australian captain and Queensland captain. And uh, you've been watching, Jude, how do you see it? Yeah, it's a good score by the Queenslanders. I think we, we were speaking around that 80 mark, so 90, 90 is a good score, but the ACT team are a quality team, so it's going to be a great final, I think. Jeremy Crichton will bowl the first over for Queensland. An important start here required for the ACT. Alex Mazana's on strike. Tyler Van Leeuwen at the non-striker's end. Here we go. A chance. It's a chance at the top. The big dive from Mazana. And he's just home. I believe Bazana called no. Tyler called him through. Chance early for Queensland. Very sharp work up the front there from Adam McDermott. No ball off the pitch. Perhaps an intent to bowl. Full and wide to Tyler Van Leeuwen. Just not quite getting the radar right. Straight to McDermott. A dot ball. And 
And another no ball off the pitch. Radar not quite on for Crichton yet. Yeah, you can see him just try and change the angle of the delivery there with an away, away swing to the left hand of it. Just didn't quite get it right. Two men on the legs of the left-handed Van Leeuwen. It's a single. It's ACT ease their way into this run chase. Queensland losing only three wickets during their innings, Jude. Impressive batting performance. Yeah, it was. It's been been a bit like that today in both finals so far. So could take a, or could need a really good fielding innings from the Queenslanders to win this. Seven runs from the first over. And obviously ACT will be trying to limit the Queensland boys to less than three wickets. Um, and you think if they do that, then they probably win this game. An honour for Rob Fitzgerald to be able to captain his side in a final uh, in, in the absence of Lyle Teske, the injured Lyle Teske. Yeah, I'm sure it is any time you get to captain a Queensland side or any state side, it's an honour. And, uh, you know, Fitz, has been around for so long and he's been such a such an important player for this Queensland side. So for him to captain it, it's something he is well deserved. Here's Adam McDermott to Bazana. Off the legs. A scamper through for a run. Really good call that. To only one fielder on that side to get that one run so important off a ball that didn't get any bat on. Doesn't find the net, but it's a safe single. Full face of the bat. And apart from the extras from the Queenslanders, they're only scoring in singles at this stage. Yeah, just struggling to find the net, as you say, Jude. Yeah, they're bowling well, and it's just so interesting to see that, that length in the girls' game, just with the different heights of players. It, that's an easy two, but mm. in the in the men's game, it's a very good length. Chance, oh. the flick had to hit. Again, another single for the men from the capital. Who's going to break first? You can sense something's coming, can't you? Definitely. Yep. Good shot. Yeah, wonderful shot from Ben Lewin. And there's that net, that elusive net. Two runs. It looks so balanced there, weighted on it nicely. Two. You can always feel that pressure build when you, you're hitting the ball pretty nicely, but you're only scoring one. You feel like it's a waste. So that, that'll feel good for Tyler. Behind square, call of no. Uh, Van Leeuwen at the non-strikers end, wary of the populated area in that region. Uh, happy with the dot, so five runs from the over. Not scoring a huge rate at the moment, but they're on track. 24 a pair wins the game, so. It's a really important moment, because whilst they're not scoring those twos, you are still making the Queensland boys push for a little bit more with the ball, and They'll be hoping that that means that they over pitch and they can they can get a couple away to the back court. And, but then at the same time, the Queenslanders just need to be really patient and be happy with dots and ones and, and hope the ACT boys push for a little bit more. Nick Waters has come into the side for the injured captain. Good bowl now. Starts with the leg side. Batted really well, did Nick Waters as part of that partnership with Bo Zorko. An illustration of the depth as you take a look at the massive crowd here at Casey Stadium. Watching with interest. There's a chance here and they called no. Smart cricket. 
Good contact with the ball, but too flat and straight into the hands of the three line there of Josh Drever. Driven, misfielded, and stay kept off the net. It's a good recovery there from Zorko, and a single in the end. One of the hardest one, hardest balls to field as a receiver is that one that's close to the stumps and if it hits it first before you can get there. Top ball, two to come. There's a chance there for Queensland to direct it, and that's out. The first wicket falls, and that really hurts. The runs haven't been flowing for the ACT, but a great piece of fielding there from the Queensland front court, as you see here on the replay. Almost hit it too well, so it came straight back down off that net. And needed a direct hit, and Crichton got it. Here's Waters. Driven. And dot ball. Got away with that one. That was there to be hit to the back net, and that, it's what they needed after that wicket. Yeah, it's going to be an interesting final over to this pair. As I said, that wicket hurts. They don't can't afford to lose another. And they have to contend with the journeyman, Rob Fitzgerald. Ten runs on the board after three overs in pursuit of Queensland's 93. Rosanna takes strike, and here's Fitzgerald. Great start. And straight away there on third ball. Pressure moment now for Bazana. He hits it up, down, and into the back net for four. Bit of aggression from Bazana. Hits his way out of trouble. Handy runs for Queensland. It was what, exactly what we were talking about with the pressure built by the bowling that got away with it. Another two to the total. The batter Van Leeuwen. A bit of pressure on Fitzy here because he hasn't bowled too badly, but they've, they've got away with six runs. Uh, it's a great shot from Bazana and finds the net for three. Recovered well after that first ball. Valuable runs for the ACT. Yeah, that's an excellent shot. And you just Fitzy hopefully won't push for too much here with my maroon cap on. <laughs> and Bazana nearly overcommitting there. It's a dot. One ball to come in this fascinating tussle between the Australian Capital Territory and Queensland. Straight to the fielder. It is a dot ball to finish. Quality cricket here, ladies and gentlemen. 19 runs on the board for the ACT. Still evenly poised. Nobody is taking control of this game quite yet. Fascinating cricket unfolding, Jude. Yeah, that was an excellent four. The Queenslanders looked like they got on top, but the ACT boys had a really important fourth over against one of Queensland's experienced players, and they've really turned the momentum around for this second pair. So Vanesh Bennett and Tim Floros are at the crease now for the ACT. An experienced pair batted together for the ACT many times, and indeed Australia. Another change in commentary. Jude Coleman will take a break. We'll be back soon. Bo Zorko is going to bowl the first over to this pair as I'm joined I'm con on commentary now by uh, Cricket Australia's Executive General Manager of Community Cricket and Capability, James Allsop. 
James, uh, good afternoon. How are you? I'm oh, very well, Cam. Great atmosphere here. It's going to be a fantastic finish, I think. It certainly will be. It's a fascinating tussle, as I said before. It's anyone's game at the moment. Bo Zorko gets us back underway. Finds the edge. I think it found the edge on the way through there. I'm not sure if he did get anything on that or if that just came off the keeper. Have to go back and watch that. But a great start for Queensland. Called through the flick. The hit would have been very interesting. The big dive from Vinesh Bennett. What's your read on the game so far, James? Oh, I think Queensland have got the upper edge at the moment, but I think uh, ACT, if they're in it in that last, with that last skin, uh, I think anything can happen. But um, you, can just, you can just feel it's going to come right down the wire here. It's a terrific atmosphere, and both teams are playing a really good match so far. It's a great shot, but also a wonderful piece of fielding. Now, that's still two runs, and the reason why is even though the fielder uh, made contact with the ball, it's not defined as control unless the slap is in the at the wickets, basically. So he kept it off the net, didn't slap it at the wickets. It hit the other net, and it's two runs. How are you saying it, Cam? Oh, it's, it's tight. I think... Oh, confusion from both teams. It just shows that there are still some nerves out there, James. And um, there's no doubt in my mind that this is a total that the ACT can chase down, but I think they're going to have to play one of the best innings they've played against this Queensland side to do it. Chance there. Flick had to hit. Indoor cricket. The Opens Indoor Cricket National Championships. Part one of a two-week carnival here, James. The juniors starting today as well and finishing next week. Great to see so many Cricketers old and young here at uh, Indoor Cricket Nationals. It's just an amazing facility and just walking in today. Just feeling the buzz and the energy at Casey Stadium was terrific after two really, really tough years for cricket, but more so for indoor cricket. I mean, the nature of indoor cricket's been, it's been really hard to play the last couple of years. So one thing Cricket Australia determined to do as soon as it was safe to play, we get everyone back and play in these national championships from juniors seniors and obviously the Masters in August so it's just fantastic to see people back playing and loving the game of indoor cricket and I think um, the, in, the energy and the atmosphere at the moment is just terrific and great to see everyone back playing and supporting a game they love. And uh, in, a, in a World Cup year as well where Australia gets those not one but two World Cups, the T20 World Cup and of course the Indoor Cricket World Cup coming up as well. Isn't that going to be an extraordinary time of the year, the T20 World Cup, Indoor Cricket World Cup, same time, what a time it's going to be for cricket, what a time it's going to be for Victoria. Obviously, some huge T20 World Cup games. The culmination will be the final. But at Casey Stadium, seeing people from all over the globe come for the Indoor World Cup after a long hiatus, it's just going to be a terrific month of cricket. Josh Drevers, the bowler, started with a dot. There's a chance needed to hit. And Waters just missed the sticks. They got away with that, the ACT. Yeah, there's been a bit of but both teams, hasn't there? Just some the nerves... It was a pretty easy hit, and um, obviously the, the, ten, the intensity of the game has probably had a bit of an impact on the fielding from both teams so far. Oh, great piece of fielding there from Dennis in the front court. Diving Vanesh Bennett. Safe in the end. Moves the score to 26. What's been extraordinary, Cam, is just how many eyeballs have been on the cricket this week, uh, particularly today. I was just... Scamper through for a run. Just one. Uh, yeah, I was talking to Lukey Williams before. He was sort of, there's a mil million people have um, hit our socials and following. There's been over 150,000 people watching the live stream. Talking to Olivia Thornton at Cricket ACT, the CEO. She's sitting at home uh, watching the game, cheering on the Rockets. So there's just been a great amount of interest, which is just fantastic to see. It just shows that appetite that's certainly still out there for indoor cricket. Uh, as you said, it's been a tough period, particularly for indoor cricket centre owners, unable to, to play with all of the, the restrictions in place. So there's still interest out there. Yeah, absolutely. There is. We've, just, um, we've just wrapped up our census period for participation over the last 12 months. And outdoor cricket, really, really strong from a club 
um, cricket participation point of view. Indoor cricket's the one that has suffered because of lockdowns in the eastern states the last two years. Still, still about 39% down on participation. So one thing we're really determined to do is make sure we support centre owners so we can get back to pre-COVID levels for indoor cricket. And it's going to be an absolutely fundamental part of the new strategy which we're about to launch. And I think uh, here today is a real example of what indoor cricket can be and hopefully it can inspire more people to want to pick up a bat and ball and go head down to the local indoor centre. And uh, you can do that at play.cricket.com.au. Find a centre near you or a club near you. Get involved. As you'll see, Jaden Teske will bowl the seventh over now for Queensland. These two runs aren't flowing as much as they'd like, only on nine runs now. The game's still evenly poised. Want to get upwards of that 40 run mark at the end of this pair. Queensland. Tim Forrest looking for the big drive. It's the variations to the, for the Queensland bowling is really troubling the ACT batters at the moment. We're an outdoor player from way back, James. Uh, what's your spin on the indoor game? What do you think? I, I played a little bit indoor when I was young. Not as much as I'd like to. I think it's amazing. I've got my little fella here today, Josh, and um, he's already at me about where can I sign up for indoor cricket. He said it's so much so much better there. You don't have to run as far and it's good for your reflexes. Exactly so right. I just think both outdoor and indoor cricket, they just complement each other so well. Third ball, the score has to change and a great shot from Tim Floros. That's what needed. Speaking of the, how it complements, I was talking with Jude Coleman before, former Australian and Queensland captain and uh, recently appointed assistant coach of the Australian women's outdoor team. We'll shortly be going over to the Commonwealth Games. The skills obviously translate. She, a former career with the Queensland Fire as well. Um, if there's a shining light of how it translates, it's Jude Coleman. Absolutely. What an incredible ambassador for cricket broadly. But yeah. she's been uh, just an amazing pioneer for, for women's cricket, both indoor and outdoor. And just so pleased that she's been acknowledged with that opportunity to, to be assistant coach for the Australian women's team. What, a, what an experience that'll be for them in Birmingham for the Commonwealth Games. And hopefully our all-conquering Australian women's team can bring out the gold for Australia. Yeah, they will go with our best wishes, and that one was a no ball to finish that over, plus the runs. So four runs from that final delivery, very helpful runs for the Australian Capital Territory. That's nine off that over, and they move to 36. And again, they're in that position where they can get to plus 40 at the end of this pair and be right on track. But because neither side has really taken control of the game, the pressure is still on, James. You can feel it in the venue. Yeah, Cam, you know this AC team really well. What, what do you think their tactics will be at the halfway mark? Will they have set a target? Are they sort of trying to set up their last two pairs? What do you think their strategy would have been at the halfway mark here? Yeah, well, exactly. The idea is just to stay in touch. I, think, I don't think they're trying to win the game too early. All they need to do is get to the last over with a chance to win the game, and they'll believe they can do it. Here's Dearness. Starts well. It's a dot ball. The ACT do need a good over here. Yeah, it's a big over, isn't it? Yeah. Yep, and it's third ball. So a critical moment here in the men's final. Third ball, the score has to change. It'll be... Reese Dearness to Vinesh Bennett. They get through for a single, safely negotiated. Now, of course, tonight, James, the presentation dinner taking place. We'll get to unveil the newest member of the Indoor Cricket Hall of Fame as well. Yeah, really looking forward to that. I think we've got about three or four hundred people coming along, which will be a fantastic night. And once again... This is what you're playing these tournaments for. Obviously, everyone competes hard, but um, the camaraderie that you've just seen throughout the tournament has been terrific. All teams represented their states and territories with great distinction, and tonight will be a great celebration for the event and obviously uh, induct the newest member of the Hall of Fame. It's a great shot for three runs, driven well. Uh, and, of course, we named the Australian sides to defend the World Cups here on Australian soil. Yeah, absolutely. That'll be, um, I think, the culmination of the evening tonight will be announcing the teams, which will be fantastic. And I know that... Um, it's going to be some really hard decisions for the selectors. A lot of people put their name forward this week, and even maybe up until this game, um, I'm sure the selectors are watching really closely for those final one or two spots. A single to finish for Vanesh Bennett, and they get to 41. Still in touch are the ACT. Queensland might feel that they just have the edge, but eight overs to come. Exciting cricket.
to unfold. Who's your money on, James? I've got to call my bias out. In my former role at Cricket ACT, I'm hoping the Rockets get home, but I think, I think you're right. I think Queensland have got the edge. It's going to be a really, really important next four overs. Just going back to the World Cup too, Cam, um, really pleased that it's going to be fully funded. The senior teams for Cricket Australia are fully funding the teams, which is fantastic. And I think in a couple of years' time, hopefully when the 22s are playing, uh, those teams are fully funded. Uh, when you're representing Australia at the highest level, uh, it's just fantastic for the first time that the seniors will be fully funded by Cricket Australia. And hopefully not too distant to the future, we're doing it for the 22s as well. Yeah, that's amazing support um, from Cricket Australia. Um, fantastic to see, and I'm sure that all the players that are selected, I mean, what that does mean, you know, as, as you know, James, in the past, it has been either past funded or fully self-funded, and it means that players are making themselves available and not on the basis of whether or not they can afford it. So that's taken out of the equation now and will genuinely have the the team best picked. Yeah, absolutely terrific. And I think um, at the end of the day, whenever you're representing your country, you want to make sure you've got the very best players putting their hand up for selection. And that'll be the case for the seniors. And Hopefully the same with the 22s, but in a couple of years' time, hopefully that's fully funded as well. Alex Flores and Tyler Hayes at the crease for the ACT, and Nick Waters starts us off with a dot ball. This is the Premiership quarter here, James. Big, big pair. This next four overs, I think it's, it's going to make a break. ACT are going to be in it in the last pair, or Queensland might just stretch too far ahead. So big, big four overs coming up. Well that's kept off start. the net. They've been sharp, Queensland, haven't they? Really sharp around the net. Well, Queensland know that it's moments like that where you maintain the pressure on the ACT. The total they're defending, it's not gigantic, but it's plenty of runs. And every two they turn into one makes their life a little bit easier, as do these dot balls. You see there's two fielders on the leg side for the left-hander. Chance at the top. The dive from Floros. Way his bat was, I think even if he was over the line, the bat wouldn't have been grounded, so he probably still would have been out. And it's third ball early in this pair. Another big moment here, isn't it? Absolutely. Great position from Tyler Hayes. Well kept off the net from Waters. It is a single. You just feel like Queensland have got the momentum at the moment. One to come now. It's a good ball. Attacking delivery. And uh, only two runs from that over four dot balls. And uh, James, thanks for your stint on commentary and uh, for all of the support that, that you and Cricket Australia have, uh, have offered indoor cricket. No problems at all, Cam. I'll catch you later tonight. No worries. Thank you. Thanks also to the Victorian State Government for their support of this event. The game remains in the balance, but that was a very tight over. Well bowled from Nick Waters. Only two runs from it. Four dot balls in the over as I'm joined again by Jude Coleman. What a pressure over. Yeah, it was a very important one, but ACT still haven't lost any wickets, though, so if they can keep holding that pressure, and you never know what can happen. Good shot from Ty Hayes. Through for two. Tyler, the son of a former Rocket, Jason Hayes. No doubt watching on at home. Two men on the legs. Here's McDermott to Floros. I think that caught the back net. It is a one at uh, safe run. Got away with that. I don't think he would be too happy with that delivery, but to only go for a one, you'd, you'd take that. Oh, yeah. worth a shout. Don't often see them given out, probably rightly so, but let's have a look. Does it come off the foot? Oh! 
rolled down the shin and I think it did hit the ground. But. Three to come in the McDermott over. Push it down leg side, that releases some of the pressure that these two will be feeling. You certainly love when the, a wider leg side comes, it's just such an easy, easy two. Driven, it'll be a dot to, uh, with one to come. Ty Hayes won't mind having a go. Especially if they, they lose a wicket or two here and they need to get back into the game. If it's there to hit, he will hit it. And what a shot that is. And it makes it all the way to the back net for four. Fantastic contact with the ball. And an important four runs for the ACT. It's a great shot. Over pitched and, and dealt with. Waited on it well despite the over pitch delivery and uh, a back net shot that is as safe as houses. Yeah, you don't get much better than that shot. Nine runs from the over. We move to 11, the scores to 52. With two overs remaining in the pair, Josh Drever will bowl the 11. Fitzy senses a pretty important moment in the game, and I think he's spot on. He's got one of his strike bowlers, Josh, coming in now. Only went for three in his first over. Oh, it's a no ball off the pitch, plus two. Another four runs to Ty Hayes. Jeez, how important is that? Very. This is, this is the moment that we spoke about before where who's going to be the one who pushes for that little bit too much, and that looked like it with that delivery. Puts it across Floros, left alone, fair delivery. Shot. It's a shot there from Floros. Two runs, they move now to 58. Behind the legs again, I think you said before, Jude, just trying to push too hard. It goes down behind the legs of Ty Hayes for another set of extras. It's the value of having a left-hander too. It's full, it's driven to the backcourt for five. Ty Hayes is playing the innings of his life here. Another five runs to the total. Big runs for the ACT. When I said left-hander, I meant the left-hand bat. Just Josh normally really consistent with his lines to a right-hander, but struggling a little to swap between the two. I'm happy to see that off for a dot, courtesy of the big runs before. 13 runs from the over. The ACT has moved to 65. It's just so in the balance here. The game can be anybody's. It's the national men's final. What have we got? 28 runs separating the two sides with five overs to come. And Rob Fitzgerald, the captain, the standing captain for today's game, replacing the injured Lyle Teske, has brought himself on to bowl the 12th. It's a critical moment in the game. Yeah, it's, it's do or die here. The Queenslanders will probably want this pair to come out no higher than 65. They're on right now. And obviously the ACT boys, if they can get to 70-75, you'd be it's pretty up. confident. Oh. It's off hands and full safe. Wow. Have a look at this on the replay. Yeah, you should take that. Yeah. It's one of those occasions where being that far in probably made it more difficult. And it is third ball, though. Can Queensland cash in? The score has to change. There's an opportunity there, doesn't go to hand for McDermott. The ACT get away with a single.
Good early call and no. Huge pressure on the 10 men on the court. Fitzgerald continues. Oh, that's an unreal shot from Alex Floros off the likes of Rob Fitzgerald. Two balls remain. Probably wasn't far off what Fitzy was after. A little bit fuller than the ball before, but just a quality cricket shot. Smart call of no from Ty Hayes. Got great contact, was flat, but he knew based on the angle that he hit it that that was going to fall to hands pretty quickly. One ball remains now. Shot. And he gets it to the back net for four. What an amazing innings from these two. Ty Hayes in particular, 25 runs off his own stick. Unbelievable batting in such a pressure game. And you'd have to say, Jude, he's given the ACT pole position heading into the final four overs. 22 runs required. What a finish we have in store for you, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you are enjoying the game. We certainly are here in the venue. It's the men's final at the Indoor Cricket National Championships. I'm Cameron Walter, and with me, Jude Coleman. If you were a betting person, I don't know if you are, but who would your money be on at this point? Oh, tough question. It's hard to, hard to take the heart out of betting, which is why I don't bet very much. Um, but, oh... 21 runs or 22 runs in a final is still a lot. So, it's heaps. Um, yeah, but with the experience of, of Matt and Luke, though. Two Australian it, players. I feel like it's in ACT's quarter, but never right off a of Queenslander. Absolutely not. And we've seen multiple instances in national finals in the past few years, if you delete the COVID gap of teams getting ahead and then losing the game. Um, the ACT have done it. Uh, they have fallen victim to it. Victoria have fallen victim to it. It's not over until it's over. Jaden Teske will bowl the first over. Matt Flores on strike. Luke Ryan at the other end. And the ACT captain starts with a two. They move within 20 runs now. Ooh the Queenslanders got left to bowl. I think there's Bo Zorko. Dearness. Dearness. And who's the... Crichton. Straight to hands. Yeah, you're right. So Interesting that they haven't gone Zorko. They have gone Zorko first over a fair bit. And I don't mind the idea of taking the pace off first over. It's a safe single for Luke Ryan. Remember, Queensland undefeated throughout this tournament. They've always found a way to win. Well left by Matt Floros, and it's a leg side. Strong support for the ACT here. Lots of uh, travelling people have travelled down to watch the final. Two to come for Teske. It's flat. There's a chance at the top. There's a bit of indecision there, Jude. There are still some nerves there, but two safe runs in the end. It's been a good start so far for the ACT. Yeah, just came off a little bit slow off that net, which allowed Matt to get through. And Fitz, he had to go to the ball a little bit more. Final ball for Teske. Call of no. Seven runs from the over. It's a good start for the ACT. 15 runs required for them now. You think we're at, we're at the point, Jude, where Queensland need to take a wicket, if not two. Yeah, definitely. And the two ACT batters are just looking so determined and, and in the moment. It's going to be tough for them, but I think the left-hander swinging the ball into two right-handers, I think this is a good choice. But he's going to have to bowl a very, very good over. Yeah, three dots uh, in his first over. Five runs from it. The ACT will be happy with five runs from this over. So, Absolutely. again, 
It's got to be wickets for Queensland. Bo Zorka is the man. The ACT captain on strike. Oh, it's chance at the keeper's end. It's a direct hit. A diving Luke Ryan is safe. And another two runs for the ACT total. I think the initial call there was no as it, because it was flat, but they reacted quickly and got through. Smart cricket. Playing it across. Kept off the net for one. Just looks like he's rolling his fingers over at Bow. Not, not looking to swing it back in, but take it away from the righties. Oh, finds the edge, and that's out. That's the wicket they needed. A huge wicket off the edge of the ACT captain. How much did they need that, Jude? Yeah, that's a huge wicket, really well bowled. Looked like a leg spinner, back of the hand type. And it just kicked up off that back net and sat up for McDermott. Massive wicket. Still three to come in the over. Good response there from Floros. There's still a chance in the front court there for Queensland. A direct hit would have been very interesting. The diving Luke Ryan. It's going to go down to the wire, folks. 14 balls remain. Oh, it's called a no ball for height. A fair effort. Let's take a look on the replay. It's bowling leg, well, left arm leg spin there, and that's kicked a mile off the white line. Sure has. Is he out of his crease then, the batter? Well, I <laughs> must admit, I wasn't looking at his feet when uh, in that replay. One ball remains from Zorko. And that was a great over from him. He's done the job for his side. Finishes with figures of one for seven. So two runs from the over. And two overs remain in the tournament. Twelve runs separate the two sides. And they've gone with Reese Dearness. Yep, I like that call. I think it's a pretty important over. Don't mind either way. But it's also a really good opportunity for ACT to just get five or six, maybe seven off the over. More if, they, if they're lucky. There's a chance. They get through. Caught the back net first, I suspect. Indeed it did. So it is a single. I do have to apologise for my ignorance. It's been a while since I've seen Bo Zorko play. I didn't realise he bowled leg spin. <laughs> Oh, there's a chance. Good call. Yeah, smart batting. Pressure from Queensland. They are maintaining this pressure on the ACT, who have 10 balls remaining to score 12 runs. Deanna sends McDermott over to backward square leg. And beats the bat of Luke Ryan. What a delivery that was. And it'll be third ball. Huge moment in the game. A wicket here puts Queensland back in the box seat, Jude. The ACT must safely negotiate third ball. There's a chance at the top of the hit, and he does it. Rob Fitzgerald, you cannot keep him out of the game. A huge wicket. And the ACT go backwards once again to 77. Eight balls remain now and 17 runs required. Fitzy. How about that from Fitzy? He just doesn't miss. If he wanted to choose one person not to hit it to, it's Rob Fitzgerald in that moment.
Plain miss there. Effort ball from Dennis. One to come. He really has put them back in the box seat here, has Dennis. And the standing captain, Fitzgerald. How do you think Jeremy Crichton's feeling right now? I think he'd be feeling a lot better after that over. He's made... Dennis has made his job a lot easier now. Comes down to the final six balls of the tournament, ladies and gentlemen. The ACT have got a lot of work to do now. They'll need 17 runs from the final over and they're starting on third ball. Now you see them go over to the net and get some last minute instructions from the coach, Billy Floros. It's gonna be an exciting six balls. Or more. Yeah. <laughs> Depending on how Jeremy goes. This is what indoor cricket's all about, ladies and gentlemen. It's an absolute pressure cooker here at Casey Stadium. On the line, it's the national title, the first one for three years. Two sides that are giants of indoor cricket. All the preparation across those years, all the tight tussles this week, all of the effort they've put in, in the training, in the matches, comes down to the next six deliveries. Queensland in the box seat. The ACT on third ball. Crichton the bowler. Luke Ryan on strike with his captain, Matt Flores, at the other end. Ladies and gentlemen, it all comes down to this. Starts with two and sees off third ball. Five balls remaining. 15 required. Advantage Queensland. Ball. Great ball. They have to run and they do. They get through for a single. Four balls remain. 14 required. A tie will be a super over. Let's not do that, please. No. <laughs> Has there ever been one in no. nationals? No. Queensland right on top here. You can see Fitzgerald has brought the field back. He has four fielders, including the bowler on the back net. Straight front court field. It's off the net. It's a single. Three balls remain. 13 runs required. Looking tough now for the ACT. They'll need a big shot here from their captain. You can see they're trying to get their field right here. Trying to cut out all the possible channels through to the back net for Matt Floros. Takes two. Two balls remain, two back net shots required, Jude. Queensland looking the goods here. Yeah, the only difficulty with blocking the pitch like that, it's so hard for the back fielders to actually see the ball. You just hope it doesn't get through, but I know, I can see why they're doing it, but. It's Held kept down. off the net by Fitzgerald. And even though there's one to come, barring any catastrophe here, a no ball or an extra, it looks like Queensland have secured the title. It's the final ball of the final. He hits a seven. Hold the He's got to get up and keep running. No. And that'll be it. Queensland have done it. Your national champions for 2022. They win the game by two runs. Another amazing game between these two sides. It's heartbreak for the ACT. But Queensland, they kept their cool, Jude. They stayed in the game and had one critical wicket in the penultimate over from the man, the standing captain, Rob Fitzgerald, off the bowling of Bo Zorko. It proved the difference. Yeah, the decision to bowl Reese Dearness in that Second to last over, I think, was the crucial one, and he he was exceptional with the ball. And Fitzy, you just always trust him to do the do what they need in the moment. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you have enjoyed our coverage. What a fantastic match!
we've seen to conclude the national tournament here. The juniors begins today and will finish next week, so we hope you can join us then and stick around while we present the medals and the shield to the victorious Queensland side. But for now, Jude, Jude Coleman, thank you so much for your company. Thanks for having me. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for yours. Uh, again, stick around for the presentation, but until then, I'm Cameron Walter. Thanks for watching. Queensland and the Australian Capital Territory. Heartbreak for the ACT today. What a fantastic tournament it has been from them and an exhibition today. Part of what has been an amazing final. They're an amazing side. Let's hear it, ladies and gentlemen, for your runners-up, the Australian Capital Territory. And it's now time to present the champions with their medals. Put your hands together for Queensland. And we're joined by Executive General Manager of Community Cricket and Capability from Cricket Australia, James Orsop, who will now present the shield to your 2022 men's national champions, Queensland. Thanks for your company, ladies and gentlemen. What a, an amazing conclusion to an amazing tournament. Tonight, we induct the next member of the Indoor Cricket Hall of Fame and announce the sides that will defend the World Cups here on home soil. I hope you can join us. But until then, thank you very much to our broadcast partners, Sportscast Australia. A huge thank you to the Victorian State Government for their support of this event. And of course, this wonderful facility here at Casey Stadium. And finally, all of the crowd here in the venue and everybody watching at home, we hope you have enjoyed this event. Thank you very much. Until next time, I'm Cameron Walter. Thanks for watching.
big piece of beauty. Spinner. Leg stop finds a gap. Can he hit the stops? Oh, I reckon he was out for that one. Oh, that is an absolutely sensational piece of fielding from Claire Kosky at the back. Left end off cricket. Here he is. And there it is. Oh, He's entered the stats straight away. Fraser McGurk cuts it.